<laughs> this meeting is being recorded. All right, I'm calling to order the meeting of June 15th Transportation Committee uh, Review or Transportation Planning Review Committee. And this meeting is being conducted uh, remotely under the guidelines from the state for the pandemic in such a way that all participants can uh, both see and hear each other and that uh, our attendees can also see and hear all the discussions. Um, and I'm thinking, do we have, uh, Dimitri's not here. So I think we're expecting Dimitri still, is he? Dimitri uh, told me uh, a couple of days ago that he would not be able to attend. Okay, all right. So um, I, I had just said before we started, I, I'm guilty of having gone to the US Open today. So I did not spend my day reviewing all the transportation charges. And I don't know how many of you have. The biggest thing that I haven't really had time to think about at all is whether I think these charges actually encompass all of the areas that we talked about. So I think that's worthwhile for us to kind of read through each of them together and see if we do think they um, are covering what our intention was to cover um, in terms of where we identified as gaps before and where we identified as um, not bringing the best value add and where we think we can bring more value add um, on the part of the committee or the committees, let me put it that way. Um, so I think that's the first step. Then when we're satisfied tonight, um, Kate has asked if she can have a round with them, um, with Kate and with some folks from DPW. Um, I suspect she might wanna have a conversation with Karis, even though Karis is still not back yet. I think there's another month till Karis comes back. Tyler can tell me, Tyler's nodding. Yes, another month till Karis comes back. but. Um, so I think she'd like to have a conversation with Karis and then we may come back to this group before we go to the select board, but let's see where that kind of shakes out a little bit. David. Hi, good evening. Um, thanks, Marianne. I, one thing that jumped out at me when I was trying to take a quick pass through these and, and when we, Duncan and I were working on drafting our little piece was um, it's hard to, uh, when drafting it, hard to imagine what the other folks are thinking and how they're imagining the piece come together. So I just would encourage us as we go through this to at least flag uh, places where we see the attempt made and and or places where we think maybe a, an attempt should be made because yeah. it's, it's just really hard to know how the other committees might imagine working with our committee, uh, this one. So that's, that's just something I wanted to flag early. For how they connect. And so I do want to say um, thank you to Duncan and David for their work on the um, kind of the overall sort of more policy ish, bigger picture committee, and to Justin and Adam and Keith for their work on what I think of as being generally more public facing um, and some of the pieces more tied into direct citizen concerns like the sidewalks and what intersections are coming up next for reconfiguration, et cetera. So, um, but why don't we start with um, the rail trail because that may be the easiest place to start. Um, Dimitri made a um, small addition to the charge there that Sorry. recognized um, the liaison that, that they would in fact liaise and relate um, to the other committees so as to consider the rail trail as a part of the opportunities for multimodal transportation. I think that's probably a good level to recognize. Um, I don't think that it, the question is, is there more that people think, sh something more that people think should be here? My thought, oh, David, I just opened my mouth first, but. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> uh, um, I, it seemed to me that uh, they took into he took into account what we were effectively saying because he it sounds like the rail trail is going to pop in and pop out of these issues as the rail trail expands it will cont otherwise continue in its existing operation and also there seemed to be it seemed that David and Duncan listened effectively to Dimitri and that Dimitri listened effectively to the crew because there are representatives on the mobility planning coordination committee 
which is the former transportation committee that will be a, there'll be a representative from the i think from the from the rail trail and that they would you know be able to participate in the planning and strate the strategic planning as part of the town uh so it seemed to tie that up as we discussed I will just mention for um, the committee as a whole that the select board did look last night at um, a study that was done relating to the rail trail and a connection to Chestnut Street. Um, so people may want to grab that PowerPoint from the select board packet or um, listen to that part of the meeting. Um, I think the question is where that particular project, which in 2022 dollars is probably closer to $3 million than to $2 million. Um, the project was costed out in, in 2020 dollars and uh, what they indicated is they're seeing about 30% uh, increase since then. Um, and there were some additional charges that weren't covered even by the numbers that were in the proposal. So, um, but the question is where a project like that would fit in the overall priority setting for the town right now. So, I mean, that is a question that we'll come back to in the fall and that we'll have some other discussion, uh, I'm sure, at the board of at the select board um, in August when we're looking at overall setting for the town. Kevin. Yeah, thanks, Mary. Um, you know, on the rail trail, I see what's written, but it seemed like they're just very it seems like a slightly limited they're just hoeing their row and i kind of want, was thinking that they might be more forward thinking uh they look so more towards the future of what um where bicycling and transportation is going so sort of more you know bicycle related um i was hoping for a bit more mission creep that wasn't just looking at what the rail trail was you know the um the Bay Colony Rail Trail. I was hoping they'd sort of be more pushing an agenda of how do we get more people on bikes and out of cars. That's my two cents. So the question is, what is their role from that perspective with re as it relates to the rail trail? Yeah, I'd give them a bigger plate. That's just my, I thought they would want to jump on something a bit more uh, to be pushing and, you know, a multimodal agenda more. Uh, just a, a reaction to that, maybe. Um, yeah, but they're, they're unique in that they actually have an actual concrete physical facility that they're managing and maintaining and, and planning for a very specific sort of geographic scope which obviously can grow and change uh the question is whether you know advocacy of any form of non-motorized transportation i mean then the question sort of becomes where do you you know do you draw a line between that and the strategic committee and you know it's as a practical matter i don't know how many rail trail specific projects would be you know getting onto some kind of funding docket with the other committee i i, I just but I could imagine, yeah, I could imagine there'd be a point where they're done. It's like, okay, we've, we've yep. reached Nirvana. Um, but I, I kind of wish, hope they had a more advocacy role too. I don't okay. see that. I don't see that their role, their advocacy level is diminishing okay. based on their current remit. And I also thought that their participation in the, uh, in the transportation planning committee uh, is there the other reaction that I had, in particular, Marianne, as you were talking about uh, <clears throat> extending the rail trail towards Chestnut Street, is that it's it's good that that I think uh, David and Duncan, it's uh, in your committee, you have a designee in terms of the composition from the staff support from. Um, from the uh, the planning director's office, and that made me, um, you know, think through that. I, unless the town were to take it up on its own, it's a ripe opportunity. If there were to be some residential development on Chestnut Street, in particular on Lower Chestnut Street, 
that's a ripe opportunity for a private developer to you know to participate in that but we would have no idea at this point of knowing when there would be a developer so it would just otherwise be on you know on the town's uh timeline um but the fact that the planning director is linked in to discuss those kinds of time frames um i think is helpful and I also think it's helpful for the, you know, because there's a direct link in that committee with the rail trail. Um, one of the questions that I might ask thinking about building on what Adam said is the liaisons have been director of parks and recreation and superintendent of parks of forestry. Are those the right connection points to link them into the overall transportation strategy or do they end up too siloed? So I'll kind of park that question too for people to think about. Kevin, is your hand still up or can I go to David? Uh, it's down now. Okay, <laughs> thank you, David. Um, yeah, so just a quick response to one thing, Adam, you said earlier, I, I just wanna be clear that the transportation committee and this new committee are really separate beasts. We, it just happens to be that Duncan and I served a long time on that other one, but I don't see this as the, as sort of a, I, I, from my perspective, the committee work that you all did, and Justin, you know, the the TMAC and its renaming is a little a lot closer to where it's been and what it will be than what we're proposing to do here, um, for what that's worth. Um, with respect to to the composition of our committee, you know, we were just sort of grabbing at ideas that we heard in the meeting. That I consider the composition wide open. That's not for Duncan and me to have made that decision without, you know, it's it's just it's just something that occurred to us. But by all means, we can play with it. You I, you may have noticed I put a question mark in there. I wasn't uh, uh, at least one, but one of the thoughts was initially I wrote, okay, how about planning board member? But then I thought, you know, what we're, what we've often missed in these discussions is where. Where's the continuity, the institutional memory, uh, where the town has been, and and that that um, I, I happen to know that Alex Klee, who is part of that staff, is also has been at least I think she may still be the town's representative to the MAPC subregion uh, with the the inner core, and that's a fun uh, that's part of the whole funding mechanisms, you know, and and wanting to have that connection at the table because I. Uh, and when I was thinking about the um, including the rail trail advisory committee in the composition of the of of this other committee, the mobility planning Co coordination committee, um, I thought, well, they may want to go to these large funding sources also. They may want to try to seek state help on on something significant. So it's not just a block at a time or something major. And that might be where this other committee can help play a role. Um, so th those were those are just the thoughts that, that I was thinking of. I don't know if I overstepped or if we overstepped by essentially trying that parallel that planning, uh, excuse me, permanent building committee idea yep. where, okay, at a certain threshold, I pulled 500 off of the plant permanent building committee's documentation. Documentation, yeah. Yeah. But you know, we should, I think we should have a way in at some, some level of uh, repetition, uh, uh, frequency. I just threw in annually. I don't know if that's enough, I, whatever, but those are all thoughts. Of, and, and I mention it now because I think to my mind, that's where the rail trail connection to what we're doing is. It's, it's if they're seeking real money, um, but maybe I'm missing, maybe there are other places it ties in if, if because if it doesn't tie in, then, then I'm by no means trying to insist they should be a member of this other committee, but it just sort of seemed that was the that was the link. So we included them on this committee because I think there needs to be a place for them to tie in. Yeah. So, and, and I also think your um, your reminder to everybody that really with the transportation committee, that's a committee that we believe the town wasn't using strategically. And really needed kind of a reboot, which is which is what you and Duncan have looked at in terms of thinking about what the scope should be there. Yeah, and I, I guess I'll just say it once again publicly. 
I think we, Duncan and I are in agreement that, with, on that. I think Justin's in agreement on that as, as another member of that committee. Um, but, uh, and Richard Cream has recently said he won't continue. He's, he's overstretched. There's one other member who hasn't been part of these discussions. I'm happy to talk to him if, if that's appropriate. But, um, but I, I sort of feel like there's, that committee still officially exists, but hasn't done squat in a long time. And, and we sort of should, should tie that up as part of the work here. So that would be the intent. Mm -hmm. You will recall that that committee is in the town bylaws. Yeah. So extricating it from there will be part of the action that will end up needing to happen. And we'll be looking to extricate, not replace in the bylaws. The bylaws are a really heavy duty place to have a committee chartered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, from a governance perspective, it actually doesn't make sense to have it there, but but it will be a process to um, to move that. Yeah. Okay. I, I actually like how um, the um, <clears throat> the rail trail advisory committee that what what Demetrius did, but to add that sentence of of because of the importance of um, and I know last night. Um, they presented and, you know, whether, whether something like that comes to fruition or not, that's significant transportation policy, if you will. That's a, that rail trail currently the way it is. Yes, it's a mile, 1.2 miles of, but it's 1.2 miles in an area that's underserved by, it's underserved from a sidewalk perspective. And that right. linkage into the rest of, of the rest of the town is actually you know, a significant policy um, shift and, you know, toward of what we have from a, from a, um, from a transportation infrastructure perspective. So I think it's great to, you know, keep that. And I like the, the reporting kind of reporting structure into that other longer term strategic, I'm going to call it transportation committee, whatever, whatever we end up, um, you know, calling that, but the incumbent transportation committee, that, that longer policy shift one. So, but I don't know necessarily about whether I, I understand that they should be an advocate. And I think that they are by nature of the fact that they are the rail trail advisory committee where the town is, is, you know, has set them up to look at and, and the remit is to look at it. I don't know if we explicitly need to say more advocacy. I think by, you know, certainly I, I don't have a problem with if we change the verbiage to allow more advocacy to, to Kevin's point, but I think that by the nature of the way that they're built now and reporting into this other committee that will have longer term policy, um, you know, recommendation by the nature of what they do. I think that that I think we're fine on that, but that's just my point of view. Okay. All right. Why don't we um... Shall we move to the transportation committee replacement next and talk about that, given that it's kind of bigger picture. So we'll go from kind of the spur to the umbrella here. That sounds um, good. I have, I have one comment. So I, I just want to make an observation to both groups. Um, in, I'm presuming, just so that you know, that in making appointments, that we will make appointments on a staggered basis, because it would not be anybody's preference that everybody turns over is, or is up at the same yeah. time, but that will be something that we'll figure out in this process. So just kind of FYI, but that, that will occur. As we think, you know, so the residents would end up getting staggered, somebody appointed for one year, somebody for two, someone for three, that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. okay? just procedurally. Okay. Um, the Mobility Planning and Coordination Committee, right? Well, we might not, yeah. I mean, if we had an, another working title. Uh, it's, we don't want to get rabbit holed on, on a title at this point, I think. No. But, um, it's a good place to start. I'm okay. laughing. Be I'm laughing because you guys actually were able to synthesize it into one. Keith, Justin, and I, you, uh, you know, put down three leading we just, contenders, <laughs> and, then, and then just put right. blanks in in yeah. <laughs> the blank committee. <laughs> so, um, so let's look first at composition, right? 
number of people who are appointed to to regional various regional boards so that we build in those connections. Is two at large community members the right number? I think you know the answer to that better than I do. Yeah, I, I really have no idea. <laughs> I, I flagged it, but I think that um, it seemed to me there's also a representative from the new TMAC committee uh, and the Rail Trail committee. That those so the Rail Trail is on here. Yes. Yeah. And so there are. So those really, are citizens, you're saying. Yeah, I'm thinking yes. those are residents, but I don't know. If, Duncan and David, that's what you were okay. thinking. And the rest are kind of staff, but I think they're potentially, I thought staff, but I think that they are, I think um, they're necessary. Well, I, yeah. I guess the reason I, I kept a couple of extras in there was just that I know for, um, in conversations over the last couple of years, there, are, there have been a few people who emerge as knowledgeable and interested and they don't happen to sit on an, on these other groups, but we've sometimes said, "Oh, you know that that would be a good person to try to bring into the conversation." And this is that was a way of potentially leaving space for them. Um, but I really don't know. You know, I don't want it to get so large, and you know, and and if it's going to meet more. I mean, we've met the transportation committee historically has met kind of like quarterly when it was active. And that's just not enough to accomplish all that much. I would, I would imagine that this new group would meet, I would think probably more like monthly, but that's my guess. Um, and when you start asking people to meet regularly, it's a commitment of time that may be more than they want to do. Mm -hmm. the, the one observation I want to make, though, is we had at the Transportation Committee, uh, we've been appointed by various appointing authorities. Like I'm the town moderator's appointee. And... Uh, we have appointees from the select board. We have appointees from the planning board. And, but, but there hasn't been any reverse reporting going on to speak of. So, you know, you get a citizen essentially appointed by the, in my case, the town moderator. And I go and I get active in transportation matters. And then sometime over the last 10 years, I've had two two minute conversations with Michael Fee about what that means. It's not really that's different than if we have a member of the rail trail advisory committee is coming and participating as a member of this committee, as opposed to just somebody who the rail trail advisory committee appoints to fulfill a, a statutory uh, a bylaw obligation. So I, I, as long as we get people from the committee that actually has a, uh, a stake in the matter, then I, that's probably enough. Just, I'm concerned we, we just it becomes a window dressing it, it, it's so noted I, oh sorry so i think we would see this sort of as being advisory to the select board and we're trying to build in more conscious connections between the select board and various committees that are responsible for that so that we would see them at least annually um i don't think that that principle has been in place in the past either um since I know that I've gone, you know, I think David and Duncan, right, have you been in once in the nine years that I've been on the select board? Maybe twice? Yeah, something like that. Um, um, it's not a huge met, number, a handful yeah. at most, yeah. I met with the, the chairs uh, more than that, but not, not the okay. whole select board very often. Yeah, so trying to build in some of those conscious touch points in a better way. Um, okay. All right. Purpose. I think that's fair. It looks like we should probably look at both purposes side by side. You mean for the TMAC? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Try to pull that one up. That's yeah. a good idea. Okay. 
evaluate and make recommendations. So one thing obviously is different is is the evaluation and recommendations in the um, let's I'm going to call it TMAC whatever whatever we name it in the future. It's just <laughs> to look at this. TMAC was to make recommendations to Public Works and the Select Board uh, that promote improvement and safety of the multimodal public ways of Needham, which is different than <clears throat> just the Select Board for um, the um, and the mobile the mobility planning. The transportation committee and that i mean that sorry that, that may be appropriate the, the 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 question becomes when it gets down to the level of prioritizing projects and deciding something's going to be budget or going to be in a tip or or whatever uh yeah public works definitely definitely has to be in the roof whether they need to be in one that's determining uh, directions to the same extent. I, I don't know. I certainly have no issue with having DPW in the more strategic committee. It seems to me that they would that they ought to be in both, frankly. And what and it seems like yeah. both committees are thinking the same way because one serves a strategic planning function and the other serves a um, the other serves a project function. And they're all under the um, DPW's umbrella. Fiction, yeah. So that, that seems is appropriate. True. Well, and I think historically, the um, sometimes the the a lot of the projects I think have been prioritized by. Um, perhaps by the engineering department in the first instance, and then um, others sort of have to live with the, that priority has already been set. And I think I'm, I think we're consciously trying to say, well, let's at least have a, an annual discussion or a whatever, you know, among broader groups that get some say, I mean, obviously we're not, we're not the decider, the committee won't be the deciders. I totally get that. And I think that's appropriate, but I do think we can act as a, a way of, getting the broader group of the public and and town players to weigh in on what the priority should be. Yeah, the goal is to Agreed. shed some light and also some understanding, right? Because it really hasn't been discussed with the public in the past. So there are a lot of people, including many of us, frankly, who didn't know what those priorities are. Yeah. Um, and, and we're people who are relatively close to it, so. Right. And yeah. that's been the issue of turnover too. I mean, sometimes the select board members have been around a long time, but in, in recent years, that's changing a lot. And, and then we've got the, the, the directors of the departments become the, the institutional memory. And so it needs to be yeah. a dialogue and it needs to be fair in both directions so that whatever the gap is in a given year, you've got some, something to complement it with. I, sus I suspect that the town manager's office might be able to more eloquently um, compose the distinctions between the two purposes. From what I see, it would appear that the uh, mobility planning and coordination committee is very much a strategic planning purpose uh, over, that's town-wide in scope mm -hmm. <clears throat> and medium to long-term in nature, as opposed right. to the new TMAC, which is project-based. And um, it, it will have a a, it will participate in a planning function in its role with the mobility and coordinate and the mobility planning committee, but it's generally more short term focused. Um, and I, the town manager may be able to draw out more eloquently and succinctly those distinctions, but I think those are the core distinctions. Agreed on that one. Um, you know, and this, and I think the way that <clears throat> the construct of the M MPPC 
is with having someone from the new TMAC, you know, on there to be able to participate in these discussions. As as I've said this to the committee before, one of the biggest pain points was from a TMAC perspective is being able to interface with the public and not necessarily have any knowledge of what are the priorities for mid to long term in the town so that we don't we don't do a short term fix that a is just all for naught because you know we could throw a crosswalk in or whatever but it really doesn't matter if there's going to be a reconstruction or you know a geometric improvement for this that would make whatever mitigation that we do a waste um, but nonetheless, that that was the biggest pain point was not having knowledge. And I talked, I spoke to Dave, you know, when we were still in our homework phase for this um, for this session. And I think having that connection from whatever we call the new TMAC into this uh, MPPC uh, will alleviate, I think, a lot of the concerns that um, that at least the TMAC has felt um, in, in 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 that. So. So but I agree that with, with Adam's point of that the MPPC is really mid to long term, you know, strategic and, you know, it's operational. It's, it's you know, the TMAC is really what can we do immediate and even immediate within the year? Like, can we help to tap into existing operational budget for, for DPW to be able to do something that maybe is a, is a little bit more than what TMAC's allocation is for, you know, funding, um, but yet still can be done and can 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 we do things from a short-term fix even though if for something it's going to be addressed three years from now here's one of the one of the things that that comes to us is we know that uh, a certain road um pine street has unfortunate geometry at, at the beginning at the origin and termination of pine street it's a one-way road um we know that there are going to be fixes um, we know that there's going to be a water main project coming along that's going to we, that we can use that um, project to change the geometry at the at the origin. The termination is also going to be done. What can we do? But that's not going to be done for three years. What can we do short term? But if we already know that it's three years, then we know that we can do a short term fix that, you know, and that so that report back, I think, you know, that's that's the important thing. And I think that this that this the way that these charters are lined out. Obviously, you know, needs to be wordsmithed and kind of, you know, to, to Adam's point, perhaps Kate can 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 work on the, the purpose and charge. But I think that's the important part. Okay, Kevin. Thanks. Um, no, these are great comments um, on the mobility planning committee on purpose on the purpose. I get that's just a select board, but. I, kind of what if we want to add something in to inform the planning board or planning department so that it's, you know, is the information is going broadly and that may the planning board can have some strategic understanding of what might be happening. But I so see that I we would, have a senator would, from the planning department in there too. Kevin, I would expect the, the planning board member to okay. report back to their committee that that is by design kind of built in would have been my yeah. expectation there. Okay. Yeah, but but it's as we drafted it, it wasn't definitive yeah. whether it was a planning board member or a yes, planning sir. department staff oh, person. Right. We, we okay. wanted to bring the cue that question up because I can make arguments for both. Uh, and we feel like historically we've been missing that staff connection. It's kind of a it's, it sort of feels like within DPW, the, the PSAP building, it's not clear that the planning department is talking to the engineering and highway departments. You know, those, they're all nice and cordial to each other, but I'm not sure they're actually having regular discussions about how to prioritize projects. And, and I don't know that that's <laughs> fair. Tyler's again going, uh-uh, they're not, so. Yeah. And, and I'm not sure it's fair to then turn and say, okay, Adam, you as a planning board member or whoever, one of your colleagues gets stuck to this, has to come in here and hear this and then go back to the planning board and attempt to create a connection when there isn't one. I, I, I don't know, I, I, I sort of feel like, well, let's get the staff to the table. And anyway, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, Adam. Oh, oh sorry, Adam, I wanted just from continuity. Adam, you go ahead. It's okay. Um, I read that point six 
and made some red lines on it. I uh, um, I think that there that there needs to be as a function of strategic planning, someone from the planning department. I think that having staff as opposed to an elected representative will bring continuity and will bring the function of town planning and transportation closer together if it's through the town staff. I think that it's, and that way the town staff can bring to on the agenda and report into the board on anything that the board needs to decide on. The critical function for me in uh, at point six of the charge was, and we can just review this or allowed review and comment to the select board on the particulars of transportation mitigation measures regularly considered by the planning board with respect to new developments, especially regarding conformance with transportation plan elements. I'm of two minds with this. I, um, I, I laud the goal that I think what you're trying to do is tie in, particularly some of the larger developments that may be happening around town into an overall transportation plan that the town has, which is important. But I don't know that this committee wants the responsibility prescribed under our bylaws within responding to a very short period of time to an application. In other words, an application comes in and this is yet another town body that has to review that application when already DPW through the Department of Engine, through the engineer, is already assessing the, um, you know, the traffic and transportation elements. However, that, I don't think it, that town engineer is necessarily looking at the project as part of a broader transportation ecosystem in town. And I and there is a balance, and I haven't resolved how that balance uh, should um, how it should be balanced. I just I, I haven't resolved that yet. Yeah. Okay, Justin, why don't we go to you next, and then to David? It was going to be it's tangentially related. Um, uh, you know, we also think, and we know that schools over the next 15 years, um, you know, are going to be a significant um, portion of concern, mitigation, whatever that may be. So when we look at, as we, as we put on here about planning board, our, and we haven't necessarily had an input from necessarily the school committee, and I'm not saying that we need to, but should almost at the same point that Adam brings up with regards to that holistic transportation overview of uh, that snapshot of what is what is going on now granted i think if a new school is going up that would probably go through a special permit process unless municipal projects are out or not or not but so perhaps that would go through planning um, but nonetheless we, we i think it is important that as we go forward with this process that we capture representation and I, I'm, I'm, I'm cautious about the membership number of this committee, so I'm not saying we need to add, uh, you know, a school committee member or something onto, onto this, uh, to this committee. But I think that school projects uh, are an important, um, are important to bring into this holistic. Um, planning process. So whether I, I don't know how that interface, but I think we need to be cognizant of that. Okay, so I don't think that somebody from schools belongs on this committee. Um, I do think somebody from schools belongs at public sessions, right, of the other committee. I think they're, they're a seat at the table there. Sure. Um, but, but I certainly appreciate that school projects are an element of the committee 
community that needs to be considered for all of this work? David. Sure. Yeah, um, uh, in response to Adam's comments, uh, very helpful, Adam. Um, I wanna backpedal as fast as I possibly can <laughs> to say that we have no interest in being uh, or at least I didn't in drafting this, try, I wasn't trying to create a system where we are commenting on individual projects. I think what we're trying to do is have a chance to regularly advise the, uh, somebody, and, and since our primary group of people we're advising is the select board, we, we phrased it that way, but to, to share with them our thoughts about common elements, and, the, and, and I won't hide the ball here, what I'm the thing that, that I've struggled with for several years now is the um, desire to coordinate transportation shuttle services. And the planning board routinely addresses new developments proposed by commercial developers, and they, they, they get to the part about, oh, what are we going to do about traffic? And, the, and I've seen it as recently as a few months ago um, that the answer is, oh, well, we'll just call up New England Business Council one more time and have them run another shuttle service. There's no coordination. And, and I would like to be able to keep pushing that point. I'd like the select board to champion that. Um, and may, and, and then and I, I've even at, in the past attempted to try to prod that discussion. It, was, it might even have been at the, at the Council of Economic Advisors at one point years, a few years ago. But the, the response was sort of like, well, that's how it works. And it has always worked that way. And I don't think that's a good enough answer. I think we really, right. I really need a coordinated shuttle response. So that's what I was getting at in drafting this. I maybe have stated it overly broad and not not articulate, but certainly do not want to be one more one more uh, uh, hurdle that a developer has to go through on any one project. They have to come to this committee too. That that wasn't what it was about. Okay, Duncan. Yeah, my, my read on that is pretty similar. I mean, there is this sort of, you know, the developer gets their traffic in here on board and they do a traffic impact study and they come up with some lanes and some curb radius modifications and geometrics. And if it's a big enough development and somebody's squawking about, uh, you know, auto, uh, too many cars, oh, we'll throw a shuttle in there you know, knowing full well that, you know, when nobody rides it, it'll go away after a few years and, 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 you know, that doesn't make any difference. Uh, so yeah, it, 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 the attempt of point six was to try to strive for something where there could be some, something other than, you know, adding another shuttle to places that where you think people might want to go as opposed to knowing where people really do want to go or, or providing, you know, some more coordinated framework there. So it's, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's very much a work in progress probably, but somehow getting some way to connect the strategic policy, which again, may be that, as you know, you, you say that as developments over a certain size show up, you know, they should have ties to various places, you know, perhaps in conjunction with others. But, you know, I mean, there could be a policy. If it's or a good policy, they... you know, the question really then becomes the mechanics. I mean, somebody else can work out whether a particular mitigation is, is in line with the policy or not. It's just, you just seem to be two, two basic solutions and everybody really knows what the real solution is. It's, it's, it's deal with the, the vehicular traffic and, and then, you know, throw lip service to, to transit on top of it. So um, one of the questions I think is, um, I can see we have uh, Jackie um, is listening these days. Um, so one of the questions, you know, that I think about is, um, I, I agree, I don't see this group commenting on specific proposals, but we currently have some elements of certain standards that we use, right? Uh, and I'm gonna blow it, MUTCD or MUCD, oh, yeah. whatever. Yeah, no, that's right, actually. <laughs> yeah. so standards, right? And so one of the questions that got raised, for example, over the weekend by Jeff Speck when he spoke at the library was, should the town consider adopting um, I think it's NACTO 
right? Which is a set of no. urban design mm -hmm. standards for traffic. And how would those reshape the way that we think about our environment? But that mm -hmm. kind of a policy question, I think is something that I would see going to this group for researching and understanding. And then yeah. that would be fed to projects to inform them going forward. For example, thinking about how this would fit and what kinds of work might come to them for, for one mm -hmm. thing. Adam. One, one thought that I did have, and it sounds like Duncan, Justin, David and I, without having spoken in advance, the four of us, we all kind of think similarly that there ought to be a, some kind of strategic connection with the planning department and that the projects that happen matter and the mitigation has an impact. Right. And yet it doesn't, makes sense, I think, from what I'm hearing, I think we all have, I think there's consensus here that it's not designed to really be another review factor to replace the peer review of, you know, on a particular project. Um, I, the other thought that I did have with this is that there's an opportunity, I think, that this committee has because of its strategic overview or planning function to inform the planning department of what the traffic and transportation standards should be. In other words, if there's a certain threshold of development, you know, this committee might develop a policy that would directly impact a change in our bylaws that affect parking and transportation, that there is, that there is at a certain size you know, you have to participate in in X at a at a at a greater scale development. You have to contribute in X, and Y, and a little bit in Z, and right. at yet a third level of development, it may be four areas of participation. That I think is a function that this committee could make a very. I think that um, that kind of a framework would be very helpful and instructive for the political work that elected representatives on the planning board do on the one hand, the policy work and the policy work, and then also on the pragmatic function of, of planning, the town planning function among the staff and engineering, and it's well coordinated. Tyler, I can see that Jackie has her hand up and I see you have your hand up as well. That's what, yeah, I just wanted to draw your attention to that. Okay, so I was, if you want to bring her over, that would be to, to make a comment or. There were multiple Jackies. <laughs> Hi, everyone. One of the Jackies. <laughs> Uh, I have it on my, I have audio on my phone, sorry, and video on my computer. Um, you actually just touched on the point that I wanted to raise, which is like the difference of like where policy is decided versus individual project review. So I would just echo, Marion, what you were saying. And um, my only comment when I looked at these not being part of developing them is that policy, policy decisions are now showing up in multiple places. So it's saying each committee is charged with like strategic planning and policy, long-term vision, reacting. And so one way to kind of simplify it would be to figure out kind of and decide how policy is being decided and then how are these committees providing that input. Otherwise to me, when I read them as is, you have the transportation planning review, which is setting policy, making decisions, informing a long range plan. And then you also have a mobility planning that's coming up with a comprehensive plan. And then the select board making policy or is it staff? So I think, yeah, answering kind of those process questions so that so there's I not a, a tension potentially. So I think that's a good observation, but I do think of this group, this mobility planning coordination committee as being like a policy group, but a recommender of policy, right? So 
So as I described with like the NACTO question, that there could be questions that this group could take and address from a policy recommendation to develop a recommendation that can go to the yeah. select board. Um, you know, the question about, you know, right now we've got everybody and their brother putting in another shuttle. But in fact, from a policy perspective, if somebody were to step back and figure out, think, what, what will it take for Needham to connect to NUMO at one end and Wellesley Catch Connect on the other end? You know, is that a valid replacement for all these multiple shuttles that actually would do a better job serving the community? So, so taking some of these very real questions to look at them and, and understand what they might be, could be a part of the very real work that a group like this would do. Yeah, so then the one thing I would just flag as a, as a citizen who's gone before TMAC several times and just as input into thinking about a final charge is, um, is both kind of the, what is the policy, who's deciding the policy that's informing the decisions that the transportation planning review committee is making. Um, in the past, it's been confusing to hear different opinions from different TMAC members as someone who's petitioned that committee. And it's been very unclear, well, like who's making the decisions and who's informing those decisions and who's, you know, aware of those decisions. Um, and, and the differentiation between holding the MUTCD as like, the end all be all. <laughs> and just as a heads up to the town, the federal government is going to be putting out an update to the MUTCD um, within a year from now. And then they'll also be from their Massachusetts amendments. And, and even from there, local municipalities have more, you know, additional control to make decisions. So again, it's, I think it's um, just something to kind of think about in terms of who is charged with making transportation engineering and design judgment versus you know interpreting you know different documents and then um the other thing that i thought about when i was reading this charge before the meeting when it says provide a form for citizen groups to seek input is like does does the transportation and planning review committee serve as kind of the outreach arm to the mobility and planning and coordination? Like, is there? Is I think this... there may be some confusion there. The, your, the Transportation oh. Planning Review Committee is this committee right is now that's having this meeting. That's that's us. Uh, it's an ad hoc committee trying to revision things. Oh, sorry, so I'm you, reading. She, sorry, no, Jackie's not... talking about the actual, what 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 is the current the team act and whatever the charge of what Adam sorry, and-, it's and no. Yes. I see where you're going with this and I can comment whenever you're, Sorry. you're the, the with PDF this. is called transportation yep. planning review committee charge version two, but yeah, charge, yes. it says provide a forum, recommend to public works. It also says monitor the effectiveness of changes or modifications, which it feels like that's a pretty big charge for a group of a committee versus staff. And then it says maintain an inventory of existing sidewalks, which again is Staff should be like, doing Justin, that. Are you yeah. maintaining an existing? So, so no, we, and and this okay. this was a we. I can I can wait till you finish. I, I, I don't know. Do Great. Make sure they, go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. So, um, the sidewalk maintenance. We, we wanted to. I was flagging this is because we wanted to have a conversation with Karis because I believe that way in the beginning of this, uh, the genesis of this project, we talked about sidewalk maintenance um, and uh, plan as and then it would sit in this committee. And then um, she went out on maternity and we kind of went off into other directions. And so we kept this as a this is something that we wanted to have a um, we initially thought was going to sit in this committee, but we can certainly, I flagged this for, for something for a discussion point this evening um, or, or, or future meetings because I, I think we're going to go beyond this meeting. Um, but nonetheless, that where sidewalk maintenance resides, I, I, I don't know. And, and Adam and I and, and Keith had this conversation as we were coming up with this. It was said perhaps it would sit in this committee, so we put it in here, but we wanted to have a conversation with regards to that, because I think it, 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 it does, it's a big issue, 100%, and it's not something that I think the, the, this first committee would be able to, um, to deal with, given what we're trying to do with this committee. But with regards to roles, make no mistake, the select board is 
is the one that is, is the ultimate determinants of, of what we do. We have flexibility in TMAC. I can put a, an advisory sign up without select board approval because it's already an existing installation. It's, a, it's just a 25 mile an hour versus 30 mile de facto. What, 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 what has to go, sometimes some of our stuff has <clears throat> to go to select board, which is change in regulatory. Anything that's going to change, no parking, anything that a police officer can give a ticket for needs to, it is a change in the regulatory bylaws that would need to go for select board. Um, so it's actually we, we've done two purposes. We've put up the yellow advisory signs. We can do those without necessarily just, we put them into the consent agenda of the select board. But if it's something that's going to change the regulatory environment, then that needs to go a, 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 and, and actually get voted on by the select board because it is a change in our transportation bylaws, which as you know, Jackie, are really a cut and paste of, of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts you know, bylaws that, you know, that, that, that are put out for all cities and towns. So some, sometimes to your point, I know some things we can do and we can do with greater latitude for being able to, um, to do within the confines of DPW and, you know, but some of the stuff that, you know, technically a crosswalk is a change in regulatory. If it's a new crosswalk installation that would need to go to the select board because that is a new installation that the select board would need to, that, that, that's a change in the regulatory scope of our transportation infrastructure. So I get it that it's completely, it's kind of confusing the way it is current. And, you know, I know that we've, the, the side, the, uh, sidewalk or the crosswalk that we approved def definitely um, went to the select board and they approved in their consent agenda down by where, where you had the last time you had petitioned the committee. So I, but I, but I do get that confusion. I really do. And to some extent, that's why we're really doing this, this work to see if we can harmonize some of this and figure out where some of this should be. But I, I agree with you, the sidewalk and maintenance that Adam and I were on Friday night, we're like, why is this here? But we have this here because at one point someone said it was in a note <clears throat> that sidewalk should be in this committee. So we, we put it in, but we flagged it to figure out where the best place would be for this, should it be in the other committee or not. So part of why I think we talked about having sidewalks here mm -hmm. was that it would be part of an annual conversation right, as we looked at priorities being set. So it was a way, again, of, of how to make things visible to the public, how mm -hmm. to have some public feedback on making some of those decisions about priorities. And we saw this group as the group to engage in those discussions and to set that conversation up. Mm -hmm. So that's so part of how this here. Agreed. I just want to make a quick distinction, though, because it the what Jackie is talking about as... Um, uh, uh, maintain an inventory of existing sidewalks. That's that's under the TMAC committee. It wasn't specifically called out under the Mobility Planning Committee. I think what you're talking about is the subject from a planning point of view could be discussed annually and reviewed annually at the Mobility Planning Committee. That makes a ton of sense. But that on a, uh, and that would be part of a public dialogue and public session. I think that makes a lot of sense. What Justin, Keith, and I were referring to when we brought it in to the mobility, uh, to the uh, TMAC committee, was that it, it's a question, it's really a function, Jackie, more, I think, what we envision of a staff function, but that it may come up if a petitioner like you wanted to seek maintenance or an addition of a, uh, to add a sidewalk, that would come up on a tangible application in front of TMAC on a project by project basis. In other words, you might want it in the neighborhood that you live in. The question came up, for instance, on a development on, on uh, the other side of town on uh, Central Avenue. Um, you know, it may come up on off chest, some of the streets on Chestnut Street from time to time. And with sidewalks have uh, have a short time frame on a specific project that may be of concern to a particular resident or group of residents that are seeking more immediate action on, or at least to raise the question. That's separate from a longer term 
man, you know, function of managing sidewalks on a long-term basis as part of the transportation plan for the town. It kind of sits in two places for two different functions. If that helps clarify. But I mean, I, I, I ask, cause I've, obviously we all know, I've like, like a lot of us here have sought Jackie's expertise and, 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 and counsel. Um, what, what, what do you think necessary? I, I think you started to, to, to kind of see, what do you think judging by what we heard today? Cause now you, you obviously read before the meeting, you see, you've, you've heard some of the discussion now that we want to kind of move into new strategic, more operational, more um, one committee, more operational, one committee, more strategic. What What is your take on this? Because I, I honestly value your opinion significantly. Oh, and I think other I, people do here. Yeah, no, I love it. I should have started with like, I think this is all great. I just wanted to flag that like policy shows up in so many places. And okay. so- yep. And I know that like as a staff person of a transportation agency, like, you know, we deal with this too of like, wait, who, who gets to decide? We have an advisory board and we have this committee and we have staff and then, you know, leadership within that. So the only thing I just wanted to flag is like, review existing policies and procedures, prepare strategic master plan for long-term priorities and projects, you know, recommend proposal. It's just, again, that like having a clear decision-making framework and it doesn't have to show up in the charge but as yep. long as somewhere it's public or written no, no, about that decision-making because mm -hmm. then you could say okay the comprehensive plan says we're going to give every single person access to a sidewalk maybe not two sidewalks on both sides of the street but we're going to have one sidewalk at least on every street then the team new team act could be able to respond to a citizen and say oh this is where it shows up on our master plan right. or like Maybe we should prioritize this one over that one, or maybe there's one we could do this year. Whatever, I, I get that. Yep. But just making it clear that kind of decision making between policies, because as someone who's co previously come to the old TMAC, it was like, wait, if I'm not happy, do I elevate it? Who do I elevate it to? Sure. Like, who's making decisions? And yep. then if it was elevated, it just went back to TMAC. And I was getting responses like, we don't mark crosswalks. And I know that's an old policy, but it's a super, <laughs> it's an old policy, but it was a very real policy for a long yes. time in our recent, recent history that yes. TMAC communicated, you know, no crosswalks. Um, <laughs> and, um, and, and honestly, <laughs> sorry, I have to laugh, no, no, I appreciate you, that you all want to laugh too with me. I appreciate it because we're all in this together in yes. this like struggle of like, we're in a very, we've never seen this explosion of like change in an, in, in an industry, like in our industry. So it's very, it's exciting time, but it's also like, it's, it's, it's moving. So it's, no, it's, it, it's it is. a lot. So I would just want to, I just wanted to clarify kind of like in every decision anyone's making policy is being made, right? If someone's saying no crosswalk here, that's a policy decision, but just clarifying what types of policies, what's that hierarchy. And then, and I appreciate Justin, your ex explanation of like where you draw the line because it just has never been clear. And then the last thing I would just consider is that in the like new TMAC where it's really the forum for citizens groups is like, do you go beyond infrastructure? Is there education? Is there awareness? Is there outreach? Is there programming? There's a lot of cities and towns that their committees are doing. There is a, there is a lot of that. So, so like, there, what is that forum to think about too, beyond just like engineering? We do, we did, we did devise with TMAC uh, that the uh, TMAC committee shall facilitate public awareness of current and planned public work projects. So there is, so it's baked in to the uh, operational um, framework of the um, uh, organizational framework of, of that committee. And then there is, you know, there are levels of redress, you know, between a, a different level of action. So if, Public Works makes a decision, and um, uh, on an application going forward of a certain size, and and that petitioner is unsatisfied, it gets elevated for public discussion and participation at the committee level instead of a staff level, 
And then if it uh, requires further address, it could be picked up by, you know, by the select board uh, and we can discuss that, but there is an opportunity for that. The decision-making framework seems to be on a project basis, more immediate through TMAC on a strategic basis, long-term planning through the mobility planning mm -hmm. coordination committee. And, but I, I, Jack, to your your to your point is 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 well re well received. I, I think that you know we need to crawl before we walk before we run. But um, you know the public education is key. I mean, how many times um, you know I, I have to ex explain a warrant um, ev almost every single meeting um, to be able to have you know on our web page or if we were to have some transportation you know social media page you know kind of going in and explaining and and having educational points for our citizenry to be able to kind of take not only for the infrastructure portion, but also to your point about, um, you know, uh, just education in terms of multimodal transportation and other things that, 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 that the, the citizenry could take advantage of. And I would love to be able to have that as like the pipe dream of, of where we wanted to go from, a pub, from a public outreach, um, uh, you know, portion of this. Um, and that, that, that is something that's kind of, long term, but we did kind of, we, we are to be able to take what the department, the infrastructure and be able to give that to to the folks that, that, that come and the citizens. I think that's kind of baked in initially, but I would love to be able to do more. Okay, I'm gonna jump in here. And one of the things I think, Jackie, you weren't here quite at the beginning, but we said with all of this, we're talking through these tonight, we didn't really have time to look at them together. So this is clearly some of these disconnects that you perceive as well and that Kate will also want to take them after this group um, and engage in some conversation with DPW and we'll do another turn at that point. So I think that the questions, you know, but certainly we do see the, the mobility planning and coordination committee as it's labeled here as being more of the policy group and, and the TMAC replacement as being um, more action oriented and really not a policy group, but but how decisions are made in both groups is is important. David. Yeah, um, I, I I I recall that uh, we 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 went with this co comprehensive plan idea, but uh, we're trying to be very careful about. Um, we wouldn't ourselves create a uh, try to attempt to create the, the town's plan. We would be advising the select board. Ultimately, policy. I think. I mean, it, it's a little bit of a truism, but policy has to be set by the select board, and we can do our darndest to try to influence it. But but we aren't going to be the ones creating the plan. And I guess, with all due respect, I would suggest that neither is TMAC or the new TMAC. Um, and they by themselves they're they're going to advise if if you want to by all means but but I think I think that that's a um, the phrasing of of your number six doesn't take into effect count that you the most we can do really is make our suggestions and advise to the select board I think um, but I, I think it's possible David that there may be um, a decision in the new environment to develop X, Y, Z kind of a plan, you know, uh, whether it's a traffic plan or a plan for, uh, you know, some element of complete streets or something like that, that, that there might be that. Absolutely. And this committee may be in fact, the primary overseer yeah. of some of that work. And, and our, and our, um, our first element talks about with yeah. work on the whole plan and or those parts of the plan that you might like us to work on but it's a dialogue with you and you give us some direction, et cetera. Yeah. And, and I guess I was a little surprised by that part of the, of the proposed TMAC charge. Cause I think I thought where, where you guys wanted to go was to sort of like, we don't have the bandwidth to do a lot of policy as we currently are constructed. And that what we'd like to do is have a say in, in the longer term stuff, but through our participation in the other committee, and maybe I'm oversimplifying, but I, but I think, in a way, this this label oversimplifies uh, oversimplifies too. And then my also the read on the the sidewalk stuff was I just assumed that a big part of why that was parked potentially on TMAX plate was you guys have so much experience interacting with the public already, 
And we have not, you know, the other committee had none. And, and here we are talking about a committee that will sit and talk about long-term policy stuff and crunch data, but, but it would take a long time to recreate the familiarity with interacting with the public that may be necessary on sidewalk and matters. So I, I, I'm going to guess those are hot button issues. And we sort of, I, it, I think even though there's obviously long-term policy stuff there, that trying to, to keep people happy or explain to them is a skill set that you, that TMAC has, has familiarized itself with over many years. And you know what, thinking about that, and then I'm going to turn to Duncan again, yeah. the, the discussion might be if somebody's coming in and asking for repairs of sidewalk or additional sidewalk to be expanded or that kind of thing, that's a discussion that certainly can come in through the new TMAC, right? If there were some kind of a discussion that says, um, by the way, the town systematically plans to redo, you know, uh, 100 feet of sidewalk every year. And there were a need to step back and somebody look at all the miles of sidewalk and say, you know, from a policy basis, we really recommend that you need to reconsider and figure out how you're going to do 500 feet a year. You know, that might be a question that would go, David, to the mobility planning coordination committee. You know, what's the bigger perspective and what's the implication? Who's going to step back and make that recommendation? So I see that's another way of thinking about those two things. Somebody's dealing with the real time issues and somebody's dealing with the what is the strategic guideline that the town should be using to make this decision and a budget for this, if, if that needed to be reconsidered. So, Duncan. Yeah, I was just trying to comment ever since Jackie started, first used the word policy. It was, yeah, in what everything I did, I deliberately avoided it. I think it's one of the most difficult and problematic uh, words in, in, the, in the language and, and, and in local government. A policy can almost, you know, it, it really ultimately becomes a reason for saying, here's some paper that says why we're right and, 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 and you're wrong. And the, you know, where the authority behind that comes from and who really makes the decisions. I mean, they are what they are. They're political. They're ephemeral. Uh, they, they blow with the winds, with, with elections and everything else. So basically, in that first part of the, the MPAC, I just avoided the word and just said, you know, t say, you know, a plan that, you know, a, both a comprehensive plan and then any number of subsidiary or component plans. And if you decide there needs to be, you know, a 27 point policy on, on segues that needs to be enshrined in, in the comprehensive plan, there's nothing in that language that, you know, means that that can't happen. It's just, right. you know, it's just really kind of avoiding both policies and to a certain extent procedures. I mean, those are those those become what they will become. You can try to sort of influence and steer them at the at the plan level, and and if there is wide enough agreement, you know, even build them into a plan. But uh, yeah, the I I don't think we're in a situation where we want to start talking about you know, how MUTCD is used or whether we believe NACTO has anything to offer. Uh, that, that's not <laughs> where the charge needs to go. Okay. So here's where I think we are. It's, it's 821. Um, I know we want to let Tyler go home. Um, <laughs> and, and we already lost Robert actually at eight o'clock. So, um, so my suggestion is I think this discussion has actually been really helpful in, in terms of looking at both and talking through where we think some of the tension points are and the question. So I've been taking some notes here. I know Tyler's been taking some notes. Um, I think the next step will be that um, I can give this as a package to Kate and go through it with her and let her engage in a discussion with DPW do another turn. And then it seems to me that we'll want to bring this group back together uh, one more time to take another look. So I think it's likely that we're not going to be reappointing this committee, but the answer is you're constituted until we unconstitute you. So mm -hmm. um, so we're not expecting this to take another year, but, but I think it's probably going to go into the summer at this point and um, give it another turn and see if we can and then I think we ought to just start trying to work in the new framework because we know that we had TMAC and there's some things that we want to change. 
So being able to be clear and start to put a new structure in place. And similarly with the transportation committee, we know that we weren't using that expertise. So we need to figure out how to reconstitute with a new program and, and get something going because it's gonna be better than where we are today. There's no doubt about that. Um, we've got real work to do as, as Jackie said, things are changing so quickly um, and the town needs to figure out how we're going to think about those and how they will fit into our long-term future. Um, and, you know, whether we're gonna be a car community forever or whether we're not, those decisions will be laid starting now. David. Um, I think it's a great idea that we're turning to Kate soon and, and getting her input because she will, I think, sure. understand how, how to try to put the pieces together. Um, a piece that I didn't, that we didn't build into this, but it's still very much on my mind is um, compared to the, to the historical Needham uh, Transportation Committee, this committee would need more staff support than, than, it, than what we had. And so part of what to ask of Kate, I think, includes um, where, how's that going to be provided? Um, I threw in the same support references that were included on our current ad hoc committees um, charge uh, statement. And I'd, those work for me, but I don't know if they work for Kate in the select board. Um, so anyway, that, um, but I, I, I think she could help harmonize um, effectively how, how these two committees could be or three can work together. Yeah, and and I think that that is something that Karis is actually in agreement with as well, trying to figure out how they get appropriately staffed because um, you're right, it takes a commitment of staff, but in, in theory, the expectation is she'll be able to move more projects forward more quickly with having the committee adding heft to the work that's being done within DPW already, so Adam. Thank you. Um, a couple of quick closing comments. One, first of all, I think there's actually some very good meat here for me to bring up to our next planning board meeting to flag it for the planning board members and for staff that transportation needs to become more of a, planning needs to play a more, as transportation is becoming um, or has become a more, um, uh, important element it needs to be thought of in a long-term strategic plan that planning plays a role in that um, I have my blood sugar level just rapidly dropped so I apologize if I was incoherent in communicating that I do have some um, uh, some I think some comments that could make the I've made some comments and notes that I think could clarify some of the purpose for the TMAC group. So if everyone's okay with that, I'd like to just uh, chat with Justin and maybe make a couple of additional suggestions before it goes to Kate. Okay, to if you can bit... turn that around fairly quickly, that would be great. But... I, could, I could get that done in the next 48 hours. I was gonna say, I could give you till early next week, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then um, I think, uh, yeah, so that would be, I think that would be good. That's okay. All. all right. Any other thoughts from people, yeah. David? Just wondering if um, you guys, when, as you do that, if you'd give some direct thought about, to the extent you're interested uh, in formally tying your work into the work of the other committee, we tried to reference you guys explicitly and the rail trail advisory committee. And if it was reciprocated, it might be more likely that, that Kate sees value there. If it's not, then I don't know. So I, I was going to mention that now that we've all seen each other's work here and, and obviously I'll, I'll, I'll work with Adam to, 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 to look over any, any revisions to, to, to purpose. Um, but yes, that, I think that's really important to, to, to have that connection um, and, um, and kind of fi fine tune that before it goes to Kate. I think this is, by the way, this, this, is, uh, this is a great dialogue. Um, you know, Marianne knows as I 
approached her about a year and a half ago, very, very frust frust frustrated about, um, you know, where we were from, from, from this perspective. And I think we've come a very long way and I, and I value every, every single person here on this line and, and as well as others who couldn't make it tonight to, to, to kind of help for this goal of, of better, of, of doing better for Needham. And, and I think we can, and I think we're showing that we can and, and working together. So I really do appreciate everyone's effort here um, on this front, because I think that um, everyone will benefit at the end. So thank you for this dialogue. Well, I really think that's, that's an important point. And I am grateful to everybody's participation, because I think this, this notion of figuring out how we had a structure that would support the work that we all would like to do on Needham's behalf, I think everybody who's here knew we could be doing a better job than we're doing. And the goal is to figure out how we can set us up for better success. All right, that, that's what we wanna be able to do. So I'm, I'm grateful to everybody for the time and the commitment to the process. And um, we're not quite finished, but we are in a much better place. And um, we need to get it to a point where we're ready to say, okay, let's restart. So. So the only piece about that I'm not clear on is, are we meeting again? So I'm expecting we will meet again. I don't know exactly the timing because um, I think Kate wants to have a conversation with Karis and I, Karis is out for another month, but I think there's some conversations that are going on. So I don't know exactly what that timing will look like. And then after that, we'll bring this group back together. So I'm anticipating that it will be before the end of the summer we'll try to figure out are people around or not around that we could kind of pull the group back together. Great. Okay. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you all. I would all right. welcome a motion to adjourn. We could be- Motion to adjourn. That was okay. seconded. Third. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Appreciate Thanks, Tyler. Later. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Tyler. Thank, Thank you, you all. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you.